Farewell to a dream. They killed them, Rhea. It seems that we should not cry about airplanes now, when cities are being crushed, houses destroyed, people maimed. And yet. During the fighting in Gostamal, where the runway changed hands, the Maria came under fire. It is frightening to imagine the engineering marvel, a huge good-natured giant with six engines, whose body is torn by bombs and shot through by shells. Mutilated, the Maria now stands in the hangar at the airfield. It was the only Maria that flew. The second plane, unfinished, for years stood in the hangar of Antonov Design Bureau, which had created it in the Soviet times, when the war between the Russians and Ukrainians was unimaginable and impossible. Before the Maria the biggest airplane in the world, was the wooden flying boat of millionaire Howard Hughes, who designed it, and took it into the air himself. But Hughes giant flew only once, flew two kilometers, and then stood on the ground for decades as a monument to the mania, that possessed the rich man. The Maria was not like that. There was no extravagance in her appearance, she was a hard-working giant with quadruple duplication of all systems, and with huge wingspan of almost 90 meters. To imagine, that's the length of a soccer field. The largest airplane in the history of aviation, it could lift 250 tons of cargo. It could carry 50 cars in its huge belly. There were rails laid on the fuselage floor, and containers the size of a railroad car were brought in. There are pictures that show a ship being loaded into the Maria, a helicopter, and a huge multi-wheeled truck coming out of its belly. On its back, like a circus strongman, Maria carried the spaceship Buran and demonstrated this trick at the airshow in La Burgett. An-225 Maria is a transport jet of extra-large carrying capacity, developed by the Antonov Design Bureau. It is the biggest in carrying capacity airplane over the whole history of the world aviation. The reason of building the AN-225 was the necessity of creation of the air transportation system for the project of the Soviet multiple spacecraft Buran. The main purpose of the aircraft within the framework of this project was transportation of various components of the launch vehicle and spacecraft from the place of production and assembly to the launch site. The airplane exists in a single copy. The aircraft was designed in the USSR and built in 1988 at the Kiev mechanical plant. The aircraft was capable of transportation of general purpose cargo with a total weight of up to 250 tons, intracontinental non-stop transportation of cargoes with a weight of 180 to 200 tons, intercontinental transportation of cargoes up to 150 t in weight, transportation of heavy large size mono cargoes weighing up to 200 t outside on the fuselage, the airplane was the base for creating aerospace systems. The aircraft had a roomy cargo cockpit that allowed for the transportation of various cargoes inside the fuselage, e.g., 16 10-ton Universal Aviation Container Zuak 10, 50 cars, mono cargo up to 200 tons, turbines, generators, dump trucks bellas, Komatsu, Euclid and the like. For the first time it took off to the sky in December 21, 1988 from the factory airfield of Antonov Development and Design Bureau. The flight lasted an hour and a half. After the collapse of the USSR, the only flying copy of the plane stopped flying in 1994, the engines and other equipment were removed from it for use in the Ruslands. However, by the 2000s, there was a demand for it, and it was restored by Ukrainian enterprises. Also, the airliner underwent modifications to meet the standards of civil aviation aircraft. On May 23, 2001, type certificates were issued for the An-225 Maria which allowed to start commercial use of the aircraft as a cargo carrier. Currently, the An-225 is registered in Ukraine and performed commercial cargo operations as part of Antonov Airlines, the air transportation division of Antonov Design Bureau. The An-225 was the heaviest freighter ever put into the air. The only aircraft superior to the An-225 in wingspan is the Hughes H-4 Hercules, which belongs to the class of flying boats and has flown only once in 1947. The Maria aircraft set a number of world records for takeoff weight and payload. On March 22, 1989 the AN-225 made a flight with a cargo of 156.3 tons, in which 110 world aviation records were simultaneously broken. In August 2009 the plane was entered into the Guinness Book of World Records for transportation of the biggest cargo in aviation history with the total weight of 187.6 tons. It was a 174-ton generator, which was transported together with a special frame from Frankfurt to Yerevan for the new Armenian power plant. On June 10, 2010 the longest cargo in the history of air transportation was transported, two blades of a wind turbine 42.1 meters long each. In total, this aircraft is the holder of about 250 world records.
The second specimen of the AN-225 is about 70% ready. It was planned to be completed at the Antonov plant, if funding was available. On August 30, 2016, the Chinese company Aerospace Industry Corporation of China AICC, and the Ukrainian state enterprise Antonov signed a letter of intent, which provides for the completion and modernization of the second instance of the AN-225 with the subsequent transfer of it to China, along with documentation and drawings. However, in December 2017, the media reported that the Chinese authorities had lost interest in the aircraft, as most airports in the world are unable to accept aircraft of such weight and size. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, no one needed the plane, just as no one needed universities, factories, or people. But then, little by little, the Antonov Design Bureau and the Ukrainian aircraft industry brought the giant back to life. Maria was flying and carrying oversized huge cargoes, it was flying from Ukraine to Australia, from Ukraine to Brazil, from Ukraine to Asia and Europe. There was demand for Maria flights in the global air services market. At the beginning of February the Maria carried cargo from Tianjin, China to Denmark, and then returned from Denmark to its home airfield in Gostomol for repairs. The engines were removed from its wings, six powerful modular turbojet D-18TS created in Zaporozhye. For a huge plane, a huge engine, the diameter of the D-18T is 2.3 meters. Maria was standing without engines and therefore, when it started, could not fly away. The other huge Antonov Design Bureau planes, the Ruslans, took off like birds, frightened by the approaching howl of demons and the rumble of fighting, and flew away. At the end of January and beginning of February they were filming one by one and flying off to Malaysia, Kyrgyzstan, and Europe. We in those days were still only guessing about the future and hoping for the best, but the planes already knew. The Mriya, huge and clumsy on the ground, hardly touching the concrete with its mighty belly, remained. During the last days there were different rumors about the destiny of Mriya. Hundreds, thousands of people all over the world were worried about her. Mitro Antonov, the pilot who flies the Mriya, at first wrote that the plane survived, but then that it died. The Maria's demise, which means dream, was confirmed by a Krabberampram. There is no more a huge good-natured plane with blue and yellow stripes on the thick fuselage, with the wings beveled back, under which the engines hung in a clear row. In the bloody mess that was going on at Gostomol, the plane could not have survived. Hundreds of barrels were fired at an airplane that had never carried and could never carry bombs, had never threatened anyone, had no missile hangers on its wings, had no bomb hatch, was designed for peaceful work. Those who bemoan the Soviet Union and rave about its rebirth through blood and fire have destroyed one of its major achievements. Mitro Antonov, commander of the Mriya aircraft, has a YouTube channel where he talked about the plane month after month. The unique footage of the aircraft's work and flights has remained forever. This plane is such a giant that no matter how fast it flies, it still seems smooth and unhurried. The good power is its character. In one of the videos we hear the voice of the commander of the aircraft saying the famous Gagarin's word, but in Ukrainian, let's go. We see the mesmerizing night run through the framed runway lights, we hear the voice counting down the speed, the engineer's message of nominal mode, we see the nose slowly rise into the night sky and the giant flies. It was a global plane. Under its wings was the whole earth, the blue mountains of the Tian Shan, and the blue waters of the ocean and white caps on the tops of the Caucasus, and sunsets of Africa, and sunrises of America, and the vast expanses of China. This plane was everywhere, and by its flights, united the globe into a single human community. Maria was indeed a dream of Ukraine, a bright, good-natured dream, that everything will be fine, that the country is alive, that its aircraft industry is alive, that the creative forces of people will be enough to slowly, little by little pull the country to a decent good life, to the well-being, and now Maria has been killed. And I read on the net what Ukrainians write about it. They write that these days they are used to living without tears, with dry rage in their souls. But there are tears at the news of the death of huge beautiful Maria. That the combat helicopters of Kamov and Mill would come with fire to the aerodrome of Antonov Design Bureau and crash its aircraft, neither Kamov, nor Mill, nor Antonov could imagine this. Serious people, outstanding engineers, each with their own complicated fate, they could not have imagined such a demoniacal and such nonsense that does not fit in human consciousness. Viktor Ilyich Tolmachev, the chief designer of the Maria, was a Russian man from Kursk who had dreamed of aviation since childhood. His whole life was spent in Ukraine, where he graduated from the Kharkov Aviation Institute and then worked all his life in the famous Antonov Design Bureau. Russian engineer, Ukrainian aircraft designer, it was in his life inseparable. 
But now the Mriya is dead, and Russians and Ukrainians are enemies. If you were interested, thank the author by putting a like. And also do not forget to subscribe so as not to miss the outputs of even more interesting videos of my channel. Turn on notifications by clicking on the bell and share this video with your friends. What else interesting can you add to this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.